When you need to make an accurate measurement on a part, one of the best instruments to use is a micrometer. They come in many different flavors. Some are digital and some are like this, a Werner scale where you don't need a battery to operate it, which is really good. Except the scale can be a little hard to read. Well, in this video, I'm gonna show you how to take an accurate measurement with the micrometer and how to read the scale. So let's get started. So the first thing you need to do when making a measurement with a micrometer is to choose the right range of micrometer. And they usually go in one inch ranges. So this one here is a zero to one inch micrometer. And this one here is a one to two inch micrometer. So you would determine which micrometer to use by what size of part you have. And the next thing you need to do is to determine uh, how many decimal places that it measures to. Well, this one measures to, as you can see on the label, it measures to the fourth decimal place to the right of the decimal. So it will measure four different numbers. You will need to determine four different numbers to the right of the decimal place. The next thing you need to determine is to whether it has a, a ratchet thimble or not. A ratchet thimble is this, and it helps you with the right amount of pressure during your measurement. So if you've got a thimble, use a ratchet thimble, use the ratchet thimble. If not, just use the, the barrel right here. So we're going to take a measurement of the thickness of this part. And we will use the ratchet and we'll just open it up and then we'll slide it over the part and we'll start to close that ratchet. And we'll close the ratchet until we hear that clicking. If you don't have it, just do use a real light, uh, a real light touch on the, uh, the thimble or the anvil closing. And uh, don't, it, this is not a C-clamp. You, you don't want to put like clamping pressure on it. That'll destroy your measurement. So just a very light touch, close it up to where it, there's no more room for it to close. And what I like to do is several different measurements um, I'll do several different measurements and determine on the, the reading if they're approximately close to each other. If they're approximately close, then I know that I'm using a good repeatable touch because often in measurements you'll get kind of skewed one way or another and that will cause your repeatability, which is part of your measurement, to be off and you can be off by, you know, tens, tens of thousands of an inch. So close it up, listen for that thimble. And then if you've got a lock, lock it down. Or if you don't have a lock, just pull it real gently off the part. Okay, so we've got four numbers to determine. The first number to determine, well, first we got to find the zero mark, the zero line. So this is, this line determines our reading. So this is the, re, the line that we'll use to make all of our, our measurements, determine all of our measurements. So the first decimal place to the right of the decimal is determined by these large numbers here. We've got zero, one, two, and three. And when you go past, there's little marks right under it, right under the number. If you go past that mark, then you can write down that first number as your first number. So we're past three. So our first number to the right of the decimal place is a three. The next thing is to use, now we've got little marks here between the big numbers. So those little marks, that's 
that's the, the halfway mark. So between these two numbers, you've got a hundred thousandths of an inch. When you turn, you know, when you're opening up the, uh, the anvils, it moves between those marks a hundred thousandths of an inch. So these marks here and the marks underneath determine how much the, the uh, it determines the second and third uh, numbers past that decimal place. Because each turn of the, th of the thimble is 25 thousandths of an inch. So it's four turns between those, those uh, first numbers. So these little marks here will help you determine how many times that has revolved around. So if you go past, if you don't go past the first little mark, past the three, then you know you're, you're zero to 25 thousandths of an inch. If you go past the first mark, then you start counting from 25. Go past the second mark, count from 50. If you go past the third mark, count from 75. So we didn't go past the first mark, so we just count all the way around the thimble to where it hits the zero line. And it hits the zero line right at 20. So the second and third numbers in our measurement are two and zero. So we've got 0 0.320. So the next thing you need to determine is the fourth decimal place. And that's determined by these numbers here, the zero through 10, or zero, zero through zero on this. And you look at these lines, and you're looking for the line that best lines up with the marks on the, on the rotating thimble. So we've got all these, we've got 10 marks here, and we've got 10 marks here, but they're of different spaces. So one of those will line up, and the one that lines up the best is your fourth number. So the one that looks like it lines up best is actually the one. So that one is the fourth decimal place. So we've got a measurement of 0 0.3201. So that's 300 and twenty thousandths and one-tenth. So that's how you read a, a Werner uh, micrometer. If you need a video to help you uh, convey these uh, measurements to the machining world or to the, the, uh, the floor, I have a video that I'll post at the end of this video that'll, that'll show you how to uh, co communicate these measurements. And if you like this video, please like or subscribe and we'll see you in the next video.